Good day and welcome to video number 15 in the series Mastering the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the NCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. This video is video number 15, the disposal process, chapter 4, 14 in the System Engineering Handbook. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be briefing the video today. So the System Engineering Handbook is this amazing document that's captured best practices for systems engineering for complex systems that are developed and operated in a complex life cycle. Altogether, there are 59 processes and activities that have been collected, and these are categorized into seven groups. This video covers the, the disposal process, which is the last of the technical processes. The objective of this video is to uh, identify the purpose of the disposal process, the outputs, inputs, and process activities. We'll also discuss the dis uh, disposal type six and disposal considerations four. To put things in context, uh, if you look at the life cycle, uh, we are in the retirement stage. Um, so the system is, has been used and is about to retire, and so, so what do you do with it uh, when, when it's done? But also keep in mind, during the uh, utilization or operation stage, there are also going to be waste products that are generated, and those have to be managed. And then, of course, during any of the production, development, and concept stage, any emissions, hazards, hazardous materials, um, or waste has to be managed as well. So, the System Engineering Handbook um, just defines the disposal process as having three components. First is to end the existence of a system or system element for a specified intended use. So the system is, is done, uh, we're going to shut things down, and now what do you do with the, with the system? Appropriately handle, replace, or retired elements. So this is during the operation phase. Um, um, anything uh, such as emissions or waste has to be handled and then properly attend to identified critical disposal needs at any point in the, um, in the life cycle. Um, so in plain language, the system engineers have this, uh, this phrase of cradle to grave, so right from concept to the end. And so we want to design the system from cradle to grave for zero waste, zero emissions, and zero landfill. So the uh, process uh, inputs, activities, and outputs for the disposal process is you have all the information uh, about the operation and maintenance of the desired system. Uh, you perform the disposal activities. And at the end of the day, you have a disposed system. Uh, you have your disposal procedures. And then very importantly, you have records of all of the disposal activities. There are six disposal types that are discussed in the System Engineering Handbook. Um, so just to run through those, um, you've got to store things that are disposed. You may have to dismantle them. Um, of course, if there's opportunities for reusing them, that would be best. Uh, recycling, uh, so they're going to be used for other purposes. Uh, reprocessing, and then finally destroying. So those are the disposal types that are listed in the handbook. Storing, dismantling, reusing, recycling, reprocessing, and then finally destroying. And just to make a point, this applies to all end products, enabling systems, system elements during any of the phases of development, um, operation, maintenance, and then finally retirement. With regard to disposal considerations, um, disposal strategy must be updated as laws evolve. So if, particularly for systems that are fielded for long periods of time, it is possible that regulations will change and then the disposal strategy should be ad adapted accordingly. Um, one example of that is increasing social responsibility with regards to climate change. And so there's a, a lot of um, uh, social pressure for uh, zero footprint of emissions, um, zero footprint period, as well as zero waste. Um, 
One of the, uh, the standards that's in place is known as ISO 14000, and that sets the standards for envi environmental management. And then one of the new ideas uh, that we, that is a variation of what we talked about earlier, cradle to grave, is this idea of cradle to cradle, so that we're leaving the earth a better place than when we, uh, when we built and fielded the system. So one of the biggest challenges that system engineers have is in managing uh, emissions, particularly greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, previously, uh, I would say starting roughly around the beginning of the industrial age, um, us engineers just thought that we could put stuff out in the atmosphere and the atmosphere was big enough, it was infinite enough that it would just absorb the, um, the gases that were emitted and there would be no consequences. In other words, there was just so much atmosphere up there that these gases would dissipate and have no impact. And as you can see on this chart um, of CO2 um, in the atmosphere, there have been over long periods of time, going all the way back to the Ice Age, fluctuations in CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, and so we've had uh, warming periods and cooling periods, including an Ice Age. But if you look at the right-hand side, since the industrial uh, um, era, um, the CO2 emissions have, have grown, and they've grown way beyond the previous highest concentration. Um, so we're completely in uncharted territory. And what's more, there doesn't look at this time as any natural way for the CO2 in the atmosphere to come back down to the previous levels. So. We've got CO2 in the atmosphere, what's, what's the big problem? Well, if you look on the left-hand side, um, we have a, a balanced uh, radiation Earth. And what we mean by that is that the incoming radiation from the sun, um, shown by that uh, sharp green line, is reflected um, out into space as it comes in by hitting particles in the atmosphere. Most of it goes all the way down to the Earth where it gets absorbed by the Earth, and then it gets um, released um, what's, in what's known as long wave uh, radiation. The long wave radiation, most of it goes out into space, and there's a little bit that gets returned to the Earth. So that would be a situation where the Earth's radiation, balance, radiation was in balance. In contrast to that, if you look on the right-hand side of the chart, the situation we have now is we're emitting all of these greenhouse gases into the air. And as a consequence, a large percentage of the outgoing long wave radiation is being reflected right back to Earth. And that's what's creating the warming effect, the global warming effect, that has these big implications for, uh, for climate. So somehow, as we go ahead as system engineers, one of the big challenges specifically is to manage this, this process. So this is the time in the video where you can uh, test yourself. So put the video on pause, get a pencil and paper, and see if you can answer these questions. Uh, when you're done, you'll go on to the next slide. And here are the answers uh, to those uh, questions. So once again, thank you for uh, participating in the video. This was, video was the disposal process. And the next video will be the project planning process in the technical management processes group. We'd appreciate it if you can give us a thumbs up.